welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to take a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Voyager Class Comic Universe Tarn. Let's start off by taking a look at the packaging and then we will get into the review. So of course we have Transformers on the side, we have Comic Universe Tarn in white text with a really cool Decepticon symbol. We have a really cool artwork shot of Tarn in his tank mode. We have the Transformers Legacy Evolution logo and open window displaying the figure in the packaging. If you do flip to the top there is the QR code showing the stats of the figure if you scan that and another Legacy Evolution logo. If we do flip to the side there's two really Really cool artwork shot shots of course one close-up of his face and a more wide uh, artwork shot of him firing his really cool cannons I think that looks really cool on the back he transforms in 27 steps there's several product shots one of the robot one of the tank and a final one showing the really cool Evo fusion gimmick as for the final side we do have half of the legacy evolution artwork so if you do get like another legacy evolution figure like Leo Prime which I do have in my collection that review will be coming very soon on the channel if you do get a figure like that and you put both boxes together you will complete the full Legacy Evolution artwork, which I think is a really cool thing they did with the artwork. And that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get into the review. Here we have Tarn in his tank mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details. Starting at the very front, we have this really nice uh, kind of scoop section or front of the tank done in this really nice black purple color, a very cool bronze Decepticon symbol with these silver sections and this lighter purple here. We have two really skinny barrels done in that light purple with some really cool kind of glowing red, almost uh, transparent uh, pink and maroon color, which is super cool to see on the sides. And of course, if we go to the very top, there's this other set of really cool turrets done in that same kind of dark black purple that we saw earlier at the front and again there's that really cool kind of glowing transparent red almost maroon color which is super cool to see through the cannon and both of these are also blast piece compatible which is really cool so you can get this guy in some really cool battle poses if you do flip to the side we have two different sets or two different pieces of really cool tank dreads there's these closer in and these are a bit further out unfortunately there is no rolling wheels which i wouldn't say is a deal breaker but it would be nice to have and the mechanical detailing i think did a really good job with with the silver and there's also some mech tech ports here so if you want to add some accessories you can put those on there and there's some more here and here which is really cool to see and again that mechanical detail looks super cool on the bottom overall pretty clean i think they pack things well uh pretty good and if you do flip to the back, there is, I'd say, the biggest problem with this tank mode and the figure. Unfortunately, you can probably see it already. The hands do just kind of stick back here. So I think they have easily just had a panel oh, um, cover over the hands. Um, again, this is a really good figure, so I can easily pass on this. But I definitely think they probably could have covered this pretty easily. I also really took like these huge uh, bronze pieces sticking out the back. And, and just this tank overall, just so cool. I also really do like the layered effect. It just kind of stacks up a very menacing, big, and bulky tank which is super cool i really do like this mode that is pretty much it for the details let's now get down to the accessories which are actually already attached to his two accessories i guess you could say three are these three pieces up here so this middle piece is i guess you could count as an accessory and of course these two guns are an accessory which you can kind of customize if you want to again there's ports all over this figure if you want to but by the book you store them up top and there actually is some rotation so this is a full 360 rotating cannon unfortunately of course uh, the move up and down is slightly blocked because of course there is pieces under this but a full 360 rotating cannon is super cool and again it is also blasted piece compatible so a really good tank in my opinion let's now get down to some comparisons so first up here he is with leo prime the other voyager from wave one of legacy evolution and i think they look pretty cool next to each other in my opinion his review should be coming very soon on the channel now for another comparison just going down a class here he is with Hot Shots. As you can see from his side profile, this is a very big and bulky tank. And of course, this is a Voyager, this is a Deluxe if you're wondering the class size. But I think they look pretty cool next to each other. Just from another view, front of profile like that. And now for one final comparison, here he is with another Deluxe Scrap Hook. A very really cool kind of Mad Max style truck and I thought I'd compare them both because they're very big and bulky and kind of scary looking vehicles and they look pretty cool next to each other and that is pretty much it for the comparisons and this tank mode let's now get down to transformation into the robot mode now for transformation what you're going to do is remove the entire top turret section here so just wiggle this off just like that apologies for the sudden jolt so how this is tabbed in is there's two tabs here and there's two slots on top and then what you're going to do is actually rotate this around just like that and this is actually the entire sidearm turret gun that you can put on his forearm which i will show of course when he is in his robot mode and now what you're going to do is actually untab the entire legs 
from this entire back portion and how this was tabbed into places. There is tabs here and there are slots under his feet and there is clips here that go right into this whole section right there. And then you can just bring this out and down. And then what you're gonna do is flip the entire thing. You can untab these panels here just like that. And as you can see, there is a tab here and there is a slot right there. And then what you can do is flip to the side bring this entire assembly out, flip this panel up, there is a tab and slot, close that up, and then there is a tab and slot, tab that into place, make sure everything is nice and secure, and then you can get the arm, untab that from the leg if it hasn't already, so there is a tab on the outside of the leg and there is a slot right there, and then what you're gonna do is do the same thing on the other side, so just bring this entire assembly out and close this section up, tab this into place like that, untab the arm from the leg, again there is a slot on the uh, uh, top of the leg or top of the arm and there is a tab on the outside of the leg that will just untab like that. And then what you're going to do is pretty much separate the legs and you're going to lock this entire hinge into the knee. So we're actually going to flip this forward just like that. You'll probably hear a click, lock that into place like that. And then you can bring the feet down like this. And this thing is going to get very tall, very fast. So I'm probably gonna have to move the camera out even more and move this up even more because this guy is actually pretty big. And now what you're gonna wanna do is of course flip this entire assembly up like that. And then you're going to untab this entire turret section and then you're going to rotate these sections down like that. So just rotate these down. And of course you might have to move this panel that has, um, you might have to move this while you're moving the entire tread things. So just move these down like that. And then you can push the head through, which was right there, push this through and it'll actually come out the back. And then this panel will tab in. There's two slots here. There's tabs on the uh, underside of this piece. And these both these tread pieces are actually on this kind of slider thing. So you're gonna push these in like that. Make sure they're aligned, push those in. Tab this whole section into place. And there is a notch on the head and there is a slot right there. That's gonna tab right into place just like that. And then we can actually go to the forearms here. Make sure this is actually at the front. And then this piece on the inside, you're going to push through, kind of rotate it around, and then it's going to be facing the outside, just like that. Get the hand, get the wrist rotation, rotate this around so the hand is, of course, rotated properly. Do the same thing on the other side, so make sure this is facing forward. Get the hand, rotate it so it's facing properly. Get this piece, it's going to rotate around on the slider, and then it will be now facing out. And then we can go to the back for the final step. You can rotate this around. There is tabs on this piece right here and there are slots on the back. And you're gonna use this hinge, hinge this up, tab this into place. And I'm gonna go for the more generic kind of neutral position. So you're gonna have these turrets facing up. They're just on a little hinge. Fold this up like that. And then of course we're gonna rotate them around. And there we have a Tarn in his robot mode. That is pretty much it for transformation. So let's now take a look at the details of the robot mode. Here we have Tarn in his robot mode. Let's start off by taking a look at the details, starting at the very top with the head sculpt that obviously resembles a Decepticon symbol. Really nice light purple for the entire Decepticon symbol or face. And there's actually some red for the eyes and a really cool detail is if you actually look at the top, he does have some light piping. So if you do shine a light over his head, it'll, his eyes will illuminate a really cool menacing red. I also really do like these sections on the side of the face looking really cool, that almost gunmetal gray black that looks super cool in my opinion. And if you go down to the shoulders, of course, really nice tread detailing in there. It would have been nice maybe if there was some silver on the sides, of course, because these are actually folded uh, in. So these are actually the inside of the treads and all that silver is on the inside, so you really can't see it, which is a little bit unfortunate. Getting down to the forearms and the arms themselves, of course, mostly done in that really nice light purple, the light gray, and if you do flip to the side, of course, we have the mech tech ports for his weapons, which we'll go over in just a sec, and his hands are that light purple, but the design and sculpt of them is actually really cool, really nice sharp claws, very menacing, 
in my opinion. I actually really like how they sculpted them kind of individually, and the articulation is really cool. You can open them uh, quite wide, and I'll show that in just a second during the articulation segment. As for the chest, I actually really do like how the front of the tank becomes the entire chest piece. Looks super cool with that silver, that dark purple, and light purple mixture, and I really do like how there's the uh, small tank tray pieces kind of behind there, so it's super cool. I can see bits and pieces here and there, and there's that really cool kind of illuminating um, an illuminating uh, kind of dark purple, almost red color on the stomach region that looks super cool with some silver near the stomach and some light purple on the waist that looks really nice in my opinion. As for the crotch and hip skirt pieces, mostly done in that dark purple with some dark gray for the top of the legs, some bronze for those knee armor pad pieces, and kind of a mixture of silver, light purple, and dark purple for the legs which I think looks pretty cool in my opinion, and I just have to say again, that whole stomach region there looks so cool, that illuminating kind of red uh, maroon color looks super cool. As, of the, as for the feet, overall pretty simple in design, that dark purple, silver, and bronze color looks pretty cool, and another huge pause if you actually flip to the back, there is no backpack and no hollowness, it is so streamlined, so smooth, and looks so cool. I really do like that. That looks absolutely awesome. And of course, he does have his two really cool barrels and cannons sticking out of his back. That looks really awesome, in my opinion. Let's now get down to articulation so the head can look up and down. And of course, look side to side. As for the arm, it can rotate all the way around and out and in. There is a swivel at the bicep and elbow bend a little bit past the 90. And of course, the hand, there is a wrist rotation. The hand can actually open pretty wide. I was expecting it to be more like Earthrise Optimus Prime, but this actually looks pretty cool. So you can put him in some really cool poses where he's holding like his cannon or doing some really cool kind of grabbing poses where he's like attacking an Autobot. And I've actually done some really cool pictures and I'm really excited to post them on YouTube and Instagram. So uh, stay tuned for those. But overall, really good articulation there. As for the waist, it's a little bit unfortunate. So because of this entire back panel, this section right here, it does slightly block it. So you can move it, of course, that far uh, each way. And again, a Unfortunately, slightly blocks it. If you want to, you can untab this from the entire, you know, tab and slot section, and you can move it out. But of course, without untransforming it or messing it up in any way, this is the uh, best you can do with the waist, which is a bit unfortunate. Not the biggest thing. It can still move. Just unfortunately, you can't do a full 360 without it being uh, hindered. It's just slightly hindered a little bit. As for, of course, a kick forward, it can do very good there. And of course, you kick that far back. And as for out to the side, it can do a full splits. And I actually really do like how the hip skirt pieces are sculpted into that joint. So you do not have to move them. They're a part of it. So you can easily just kick and do really cool poses without doing anything. As for the uh, other articulation, there is a knee bend. There is a swivel and ankle pivots. And that is pretty much it for the articulation. I just think uh, the ankle pivot probably could be a little bit better. And of course, unfortunately, the waist swivel is slightly hindered at the back. I'm just going to straighten him out just a tad bit. But other than that, I think this robot mode is really impressive. I just love the look of this robot mode. I cannot gush over it anymore. But let's now get down to the accessories. So we can store these accessories in several different ways. The first way being is just kind of storing it as, as his cannon on his forearm. So there is a port a peg there and a port on his forearm. So you can just plug that right into place just like that. So you can store it like that, which I think looks pretty cool. Probably this is my preferred look. Overall, that looks pretty cool, and as I mentioned before in the tank mode, they are Blast Beast compatible, so you can put in some really cool fixed parts and create some really cool poses, and I do have to say again, love the dark purple they use for the barrel, and all that really cool kind of illuminating pink or dark red color through there looks absolutely awesome. I really do like that. As for the second way you can store the accessories is his Evo Fusion gimmick, so you can store it on his back, but you can also combine both these pieces and form this huge, long cannon so we just don't really need this piece for that which i kind of wish maybe they had another use for it but what you're going to want to do is just connect both pieces together and just like that you have this huge long cannon piece which i think is pretty cool um this is probably my least favorite of the storage because again you don't really have a use for this it doesn't say anywhere in the instructions where you put it but of course if you want to you can plug it into his hand and have it be like a sniper or a huge long rifle like that and you can get his other hand to support it if you want to which is pretty cool of course i can't create any huge crazy pose right now i'm kind of on the spots but you can do something like that which is pretty cool 
As for the final way, which is probably, uh, might actually might actually be my favorite way. I'm kind of back and forth between the first option and the third, but if you flip to the back, what you're going to want to do is bring these little cannons down, just like that, and have them out of the way. Just tab these into place. There's little tabs and slots, and then you're going to split these like that and reattach them. But before you do that, make sure you get this entire gray piece, and it's just on a little uh, swivel here. You just swivel that down, and this port is going to tab right, this peg is going to tab right into that port right there. And before you do that, there is a port here. And then there is a peg on the weapon that will just attach like that. Do the same thing on your side. So just get this other weapon here, attach that into place. And then you can attach these to his back and create a really cool effect with the cannons going right over his head. So just plug that right into place just like that. And there we have the final option for the storage, which I really do like this look. That looks super cool. My only complaint is I think maybe this entire back piece here might stick up a little too much. I don't really like how this peg is just sticking straight up, but sometimes you really can't see it. Just kind of depends on the pose you're putting them in. But I think the can is just sticking straight forward. Looks so cool and so menacing. Let's now get down to some comparisons. So first up here he is, is with his Voyager Wavemate Leo Prime. I think they look pretty cool next to each other and he he actually kind of towers over leo prime of course you do have to take into account he does have the cannons on his back but he is very big and very chunky and menacing so they look pretty cool next to each other and this review leo prime's review should be up on the channel very very soon and that's pretty much it for that comparison now on to a deluxe scale here he is with another decepticon needle nose which his review is on the channel right now now for one final comparison, moving down a class, here he is with Core Class Slug. As you can see, he is very big. And that is pretty much it for the comparisons, accessories, and details. So let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Evolution Voyager Class Comic Universe Tarn starting in the robot mode. I think overall this figure is just absolutely amazing. Definitely one of my favorite figures of Legacy and just Legacy Evolution. Of course, I don't have that many yet, but I think this is going to be one of my favorites. So starting in the robot mode, the head sculpt, I think they did a really good job with. What's actually super cool is there is light piping. So if you do shine a light over his head, there will be some really cool red illuminating from his eyes, which is really cool. And the sculpt of the Decepticon symbol is really nice. And of course, there's some really cool gunmetal gray on the sides of his face so it actually looks like these Decepticon symbols like burned or like put into his face which is super cool I think they did a really good job with that also there's some really cool tank treads for his shoulders and it's actually super cool because there's some tank treads on uh, behind his chest so it looks like it's a part of him which is super cool I think that uh, I think they did that really well it would be nice maybe if they could have uh, had still shown some of that silver because if you saw in the tank boat there's quite a bit of silver really cool mechanical detailing from that mode but unfortunately it gets all covered up so it'd be nice to to see maybe if they had transformed slightly different we could see a little bit more of that in this smoke but that's a very minor complaint he does come with i guess two ish three accessories so it does come with two cannons which are actually differently sculpted i thought they were going to be exactly the same thing but apparently they're actually not i was very surprised when i saw that when i opened up this figure the third one is just like the little adapter kind of connector piece you really just use, to, use it to attach both cannons you can actually store the accessories in two different ways so you can store them on the back like you're seeing here or you can store it on his forearm pretty much like just like this of course just it's on its form the position of the weapons are pretty much the same um and the third one is this evil fusion gimmick where you just get both weapons, connect them together, and form this really long rifle. It's not the greatest. It's just okay. I think, honestly, probably the evil fusion gimmick of Needle Nose, which his review should be on the channel right now. I think I like that gimmick a little bit more than this. That's just my opinion. The rifle in concept is pretty cool, but kind of lazy because you really don't use the connector piece at all. You just put it off to the side, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, articulation-wise, really impressed. Really good articulation. The only complaint is, unfortunately, Unfortunately, um, the waist rotation is slightly hindered. You can sort of untransform the uh, backpack piece if you want a full waist rotation, but as it is not touching anything, it's slightly hindered. This whole back piece here does slightly mess it up, but it can move slightly back and forth, which is good. But everything else, really impressed. I'm actually really glad how they sculpted the hip skirt pieces into the legs, so you do not have to flip them up. They go with the legs, so you can do some really cool poses, and I have done a lot of really cool pictures and really cool poses that I'm really excited to show off. And 
Now, um, I think the ankle pivot could be a little bit wider because really due to transformation, there's nothing stopping them from making it a better one, but that's a very minor complaint. I also really do like the sculpt of the hand. It's a very sharp, menacing fingers. I really do like how they did that. And the paint apps of the weapons are actually super cool as well. They're really cool, illuminating kind of pink-ish purple of the uh, lines as you can see there up top. That actually looks really cool in my opinion. And there's some more on his stomach, his chest that all looks so cool and just such an impressive figure. It's just like Skullgren. If you watch that review, I just could not stop gushing over that figure. This figure is just the same. It is such a really good figure. Another huge uh, Protoss figure is if you can see on the back, just taking out of the cannons, just taking those off to the side, just um, minusing that from the picture of the shot. There is, it's such a clean back. There's no backpack. There's no kibble. Also zero hollowness. There's a few areas behind the feet, which I can easily excuse that because it doesn't really, you know, stop anything. It doesn't ruin the whole, you know, um, I guess view or uh, design of the figure. It doesn't disrupt anything. It's still a very smooth, uh, clean, um, um, you know, I'm not really sure what words to use, but you know what I mean. So I think they did a really good job with the robot mode. But let's, uh, of course, for transformation, I have to say, um, overall pretty simple. I think it might be a little easier transforming it from the tank to the robot than the robot to the tank. That could just be me, but it's still a pretty fun transformation. Um, not hard. I would say not hard, but still pretty fun. Um, I would say probably after two times using the instructions, you'll get it down pretty good. As for the tank mode, I actually do quite like it. I like the robot mode a little bit better. I understand understand some people's complaint. I've heard they say it's a little bit hodgepodge -y. Sometimes from certain views, it doesn't look the greatest, but I actually really do like the layered effect. There's a really cool kind of, um, and kind of the cannon, it starts very low and it's just, it just keeps kind of stacking up and getting lots of layers, lots of details, which is really cool to see. I also really do like all the tread detailing, a lot of silver and tread detailing on the side. Unfortunately, there's no wheels, which I think is a missed opportunity. I think they definitely could have put some wheels on that tank. I really don't think anything was stopping them. I guess maybe they didn't really want it to, for you to see the wheels in this mode because all the tr uh, tank treads are his shoulders. So they probably wouldn't want you to see the wheels on his back or the front. I understand that, but I think maybe Maybe they could have found a way to do it. Another complaint is unfortunately the hands you just kind of stick out the back but that is another very minor complaint for a really good figure because this just on the back for most views and profiles you barely even see them but honestly that's one I think that's even worse than the whole wheel situation because that's one I definitely think they could have just added a hinge or an extra panel just to cover them up but again you barely ever see them as for the weapon storage for that mode it actually becomes the whole top uh, turret cannon piece which is actually super cool because there is a whole rotating kind of slider piece for that extra kind of you know connector piece so it the entire turret can actually rotate a full 360 unfortunately due to the nature of the figure and the design of the the figure um the cannons can barely move up which is a bit unfortunate but a full 360 rotation is really nice to see and uh, all four cannons these and those are actually all plastic piece compatible so you can create some really cool poses so if you can't already tell I really like this figure highly suggest to get I think most people will get this figure even without seeing this video but I just have to say it it's a really good figure um, I definitely I probably will be I say in the top 10 of 2033 um, so let me know anything you think this figure in the comment section down below. Do you agree with all my problems, like the hands sticking out and the wheels? Do you want wheels? Some people really don't care about that sort of thing. I think if it's a tank, it should probably include maybe two or four. I think that'd be pretty cool. But that, I would say, is a very, a very minor want. But I think probably of the two problems that I would rather have fixed, it's probably the hands being covered. i say that's the major complaint or nitpick of mine. But everything else, so impressive. Such an amazing figure. I probably will put this in my favorite section. I actually have a favorite shelf in my collection. I think he'll probably be going there, which is saying something because I'm pretty picky. Uh, that is pretty much it for this review. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section down below. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you next time.